this is a thyroid ultrasound. The first 20 seconds consist of a movie made of multiple images linked together. As it progresses, we'll point out some of the various pathology which is seen. Now we begin the anatomy. Here the trachea, isthmus, and musculature can be seen. A small nodule is seen within the gland. A small nodule is seen in the right lobe of the thyroid gland measuring 0.26 centimeters. This is very small. Here we begin to orient ourselves by finding the trachea first and recognizing that we're looking at the patient's right thyroid lobe. Here we orient ourselves by finding the trachea and the carotid artery. How do we know that this is the carotid artery and not the jugular vein? Well, anatomy tells us that this most likely is the carotid because it doesn't seem to be compressible. This and the next few images are very impressive. They show the trachea very well and the small, thin thyroid isthmus which overlies the trachea. Orientation here clearly shows us which side is the right side of the gland and which side is the left. Without compressibility, I'm not sure if this is the jugular vein or the carotid. Here again we can orient ourselves by finding the left lobe of the thyroid in relationship to the trachea. The trachea is seen on the left side of the screen. In summary, this is basically a normal thyroid ultrasound. There were a few small tiny cysts found, but with practice and orienting yourself by finding the vessels and the trachea, you can rapidly find your way around. The most common test to assess a thyroid gland is a thyroid ultrasound. Here we see another example of this test. In these images, Doppler imaging also checks for blood flow through the gland. Once again, we orient ourselves by finding the trachea and a vessel, in this case the internal jugular vein. We can also clearly see the isthmus of the gland. These images from VH dissector show the intact thyroid gland and its relationship to the musculature, the trachea, and the esophagus. In this image we see a nodule which is measured at 1.7 centimeters. Look carefully at these images from the thyroid gland in the VH dissector cadaver. Notice that the right lobe is inhomogeneous compared to the left. Again, orient yourself. The internal jugular vein, the trachea, and the right lobe are clearly seen here. Bringing these views again to VH dissector, we once again orient ourselves and notice that the internal jugular vein lies much more lateral than the carotid artery, which lies more posterior in these images. Here, this vessel is most likely the internal jugular vein, although because it's not compressible, we're not sure. Here in these images, the ultrasonographer has moved her probe to give us a sagittal image, and she's labeled it accordingly. It says right sagittal. 
it's important to understand the orientation of the probe so that you can eventually understand the photos. Here we see another nodule, this one in the upper portion of the left thyroid gland. Notice here that the ultrasonographer has moved her probe now to the left lobe of the gland. We know because the trachea is medially. Again, we reorient ourselves with the anatomy by looking at the VH dissector image. Here the ultrasonographer has turned on her Doppler probe to measure blood flow. If these were actually color images, we could identify the vessels. Again, this vessel is internal jugular. We know this from the anatomy, but need compression to verify. In this image, the ultrasonographer has labeled the image as the isthmus, but we know this because we can readily identify the trachea, the isthmus, and portions of the left lobe and the right lobe. Here, the final VH dissector image shows the relationships of the trachea to the esophagus, left and right lobes.